اللہ مذکرنا منہما نسینا وعلمنا منہما جہلنا ورزقنا تلاوته آنا اللیل وانا النہار وجعله لنا حجت یا رب العالمین آمین Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. With the name of Allah and invoking His help, we begin our study of the Quran from the beginning of Surah An-Nisa today. But let me refresh your memory with what I said in the very beginning in the introductory lecture. about the grouping of the surahs of the Quran. As you know, Quran consists of 114 surahs. And they are grouped in two ways. One mode of grouping is what we call Ahzab or Manazil. In the Indian subcontinent, we use the word manzil. In the Arabic world, the term is hizb. The plural of hizb is ahzab. These seven ahzab, they are nearly equal in volume. And this grouping has been done only with the sole purpose that if a Muslim recites one hizb every day, He will complete the recitation of the whole of the Quran in a week. So to complete the recitation of the whole of the Quran in one week, Quran has been divided into seven ahzab. But they are not absolutely equal in volume or size. Because if you want to have absolutely equal ahzab, then you will have to break the surahs. Some surahs are very long, some are very short. So that is why, you know, these ahzab are not absolutely equal, they are nearly equal. But there is a very beautiful design in this division. This division was present in the days of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions. Razi Allah ta'ala alayhim ajma'in. If you take away Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the preface to the whole of the Qur'an, It is called Ummul Kitab, Ummul Quran. Now three surahs comprise first manzil. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa. The next has five surahs. The next has seven surahs. The next has nine surahs. The next eleven. The next thirteen. And the last comprises of 65 surahs. Again, a multiple of 13. 13 into 5 goes to be 65. So, mathematical system. So these are the ahsab. To facilitate a reciter who recites Quran every week. So, these seven portions, he can easily recite one portion a day and complete the recitation of the whole of the Quran in one week. There's another grouping. And that grouping is based on the subject matter of the surahs. They, we know, everybody knows, that the Makki and the Madani surahs are interspersed in the whole of the Quran. We find four Madani surahs, very long, very lengthy. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Baidah. Then two Makkis, Surah Al-Anam, which you heard in the Taravi today. Then Surah Al-Araf. Again you have two Madanis. Which are they? Surah Al-Anfal, Surah Al-Tawbah. Then 14 Surahs which are Makkis and one Surah which is Madani, that is Surah Al-Nur. Then several Surahs Makki and again one Surah Madani, Surah Al-Ahzab. Then several Makki surahs and then three surahs which are Madani. Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Surah Al-Fatih and Surah Al-Hujrat. Then there are seven surahs Makki and then ten surahs Madani. Starting from Surah Al-Hadid and ending with Surah Al-Tahreem. 
then you know most of the rest of the Quran comprises of the Makki surahs, except for a small number of the surahs in the end of the Quran, Jar Madani. So these are seven groups, Makki Madani, Makki Madani, Makki Madani, seven times. And each group comprising of one or more Makki surahs and one or more Madani surahs, it becomes a group. And this each group has a central theme. The Makki surahs of that group and the Madani surahs of, of that group, they are discussing the two aspects of that theme. The same theme. One aspect in the Makki surah and the other aspect in the Madani surah and so on. So the first group of these comprises of Surah Al-Fatiha, only one surah which is Makki. And what is the central theme of Surah Al-Fatiha? اِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ O Allah, lead us to the right path. سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ عَنَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ Hidayah, guide us, guide us. And not only guide us, lead us to the right path. Now the four Madani surahs are giving you that right path. What to do, what not to do. The main theme is Sharia. These things are permissible, they are halal. These things are prohibited, they are haram. You can go this way, not this way. So this is the guidance to the right path. So the main theme of the four Madani surahs, Suratul Fatih, Suratul Baqarah, Surat Al Imran, Surat Al Nisa, Surat Al Maida is the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the right path, a Sirat Al Mustaqim. But there is a secondary theme also, and that is the Dawa, and then charge sheeting, the former Muslim Ummah. Comprising of the Jews and the Christians. They were the former Muslim Ummah. They were the representatives of Allah on earth. For 2000 years, Moses alayhi salatu was given Torah 1400 years before Christ. And 600 years after Christ, is the time of the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So for 2000 long years, that was the ummah, Muslim ummah of that time. But they were deposed. A new ummah was created on the basis of the prophethood of, and messengerhood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We belong to that ummah, thanks to Allah. It's only by the grace of Allah that we belong to that ummah. Because we were born as Muslims. It's only the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But why that former Ummah was deposed? So there is a long charge sheet against them. In all these four surahs. So these four surahs now, as I told you, has two themes. Number one, the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And number two, the Dawah and the charge sheet. When they are deposed, are they doomed forever? No. The gate of the mercy of Allah is open for them also. They can also join this Ummah. There is no bar. They can believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They can believe in Quran. The moment they do it, they become a part and parcel of this Ummah. Asa Rabbukum an yarhabakum wa in uttum udna. This is the ayah in Surah Al-Bani Israel, which is the Makki Surah. Your Lord is still ready to have mercy upon you. Don't think you are doomed forever. You have been deposed from that position due to your misdeeds. We have created a new Ummah. 
But you can join the Ummah. This Ummah is not based on any race. So you can join it. You can be a part and part of this Ummah. In the Quran, there is this Quran which is guiding to that path which is the most straight path. So this Dawah, come and join this Ummah. Come and believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Come and believe in this Quran. And the gates of the mercy of Allah are open for you. Allah is ready to embrace you with his mercy. Only if you have faith in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And only if you have faith in Quran. Nothing more is required. The moment you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, you are equal to any Muslim in the world. Not inferior to any Muslim. Now these four surahs, they are divided, or you may say they are divisible in two pairs of two surahs each. There are certain similarities, you know, between Surah Al Imran and Surah Al Baqarah. For example, most apparent, both start with huruf muqattaat the alphabets which are pronounced brokenly, separately. Alif, Lam, Meem, Zalik al Kitab al Arabafi. This is the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah. Alif, Lam, Meem, Allahu la ilaha illahu. This is the beginning of Surah Al Ibrahim. The second, very apparent, prominent similarity, both the surahs end with very grand prayers. Rabbana la tuakhizna in nasina wa aqtana. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala al-lazina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bi wa'fu anna waghfir lana warhamna anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin and that is the end of Surah Al-Baqarah and we find in the last section of Surah Al-Ali Imran Rabbana innana sami'na munadiyan yunadi li liman an aminu bi rabbikum fa'amanna Rabbana faghfir lana zunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar. Rabbana wa atina ma wa atana ala rusulika wa la tukhzina yawm al qiyamah innaka la tukhlifu al mi'ad. Very grand prayer. Then we have the similarity. Both these surahs can be divided nearly in two halves. But I can't go into more details. Now we are coming to the second pair. And this consists of Surah Al-Nisa and Surah Al-Ma'idah. And you see, both start abruptly, both end abruptly. No huruf muqattat in the beginning of Surah Al-Nisa. Ya ayuhal nasu attaqoo rabbakum al-lazhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidatin wa khalaqa min haza ujaha wa bassa minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa attaqoo allaha al-lazhi tasaluna bihi wa l-arhaab inna allaha kaan alaykum raqeeba. No preface, no preamble, no huruf muqattat, no glorification of Allah, no tasbih, no tahmeed, nothing of the sort. Direct address starts from the very beginning. In the same way, Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu awfu bil uqood. Again, no huruf muqattat, no tasbih, no tahmeed, nothing of the sort. This is the similarity. Between these two. And we shall be noting the other similar points when we are going through the translation, inshallah. Now we begin with Surah An Nisa. With the name of Allah again and invoking His help again. Ya Yuhanna Suttaku Rabbakum Ladi Khalaqakum Min Nafsim Wahida. Let me tell you a few things about the Surah An Nisa as a whole also. This consists of 24 sections, 24 rukus, and 176 ayat. And you know, its subject can be divided into two parts. The address to the former ummah, only 37 ayat out of 176 are addressing directly or indirectly the former Muslim ummah. 
with one name, Ya Ahlul Kitab. Either inviting them to embrace Islam or charge sheeting them on their misdeeds. The rest, that is 139 ayat out of 176, they are addressing Muslims as Muslims. But this part also can be divided into two parts. A positive address to the Muslims, real Muslims, true Muslims, showing them the path, showing them the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, showing them how to reform their society, how to uplift the degraded and downtrodden sections of society. This is what I am calling positive side. And there is a negative side also. 55 ayat I am labeling as positive and 84 as negative. And what do I mean by negative? Here actually the hypocrites are being discussed and addressed. Who were legally Muslims? Because they were saying, Ashhadu Allah, ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. They were praying behind Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the mosque of the Prophet. But still they were lacking the real faith. They were hypocrites. So exposing them, so that the Muslims should know the fifth columnist among their society. They should be aware of their designs and plots. It was necessary to expose them, the hypocrites, and what they were doing, criticizing them, and also exhorting them to mend their ways. Have a second look on your attitude. Look what you are doing. You are condemning your own self. You will be doomed. Although you will think that you are Muslims, you, are, you will not be accept and, and acknowledged as Muslims on the day of judgment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we shall find in this surah the most, the strongest condemnation of munafiqeen. Inna al munafiqeen fi darki al asfal min al nar. These hypocrites will be in the lowest portion, lowest section of Jahannam, of the hell. They are more hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the kuffar. A kafir is openly kafir. If he is an enemy, he is an open enemy. If he attacks you, he is attacking from front. But a monafiq, a hypocrite, he is the hidden enemy. Just like a snake that you are carrying, it can bite you anywhere, at any time. So, the major portion of this surah, now note, total number of ayat 176, out of these 176, 84 ayat, nearly half of this surah, that consists of dealing the subject of nifaq, criticizing the munafiqeen, exposing them so that the Muslims should know and recognize the danger that they are facing from the hidden enemy within their ranks, in their society. And also advising them, exhorting them to mend their ways. Still, as I told you, as about the former Muslim Ummah, Allah is ready to embrace you with His mercy. So, ya ayyuha alladhina amanu, aminu billahi wa rasoolihi, wal kitab alladhi nazara ala rasoolihi, wal kitab alladhi anzala min qabl. Oh, you who profess to believe, but don't believe really, have real faith. There's still time to mend. You can save yourself from the eternal punishment of the hereafter, lest this time should finish. So this is the analysis of this surah. Now we beginning, we are beginning with the first part, but note one point more. 
these sections they are interwoven with each other first 43 ayat are the positive address to the muslims do this do this don't do this don't do this you have to respect the women folk you should look after the orphans you should divide you know whatever somebody some deceased has left the property it must be divided according to the rules of the sharia and so on the biggest chunk you know to the address to the muslims it consists of positive ayat positive commandments the do's and the don'ts of the sharia and then you know there is an address to the to the former muslim umma ya ahl kitab then there comes an address to the munafiqeen but not one thing nowhere in the quran the munafiqeen the hypocrites are addressed as ya ayyuhal ladina nafaqu ya ya ayyuhal munafiqun nowhere because they were also muslims legal muslims so they are also addressed ya ayyuhal ladina amanu oh you who profess to believe but lack the real belief but these things are in bracket not in express words only you have to ponder over the subject of the ayat to decide whether the addressee of this ayat is the muslim ummah the real momin or the addressee of these ayat are the munafiqun so that you have to know for yourself